Back at it with another reaction video, CSG. What's up with y'all? Let's get into it. Let's get right into it. I got a multiple amount of Abba and Preach reactions coming for y'all. Um, y'all let me know what else y'all want me to react to. But right now, I'm on a grind. I'm going to react to this Cat Williams and Dave Chappelle so sick Hollywood. Hollywood. What y'all think about Hollywood? Y'all be in Hollywood, man. If they told you to do something strange for some change, for some fame, y'all would do it? No. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't do that shit. I got too much morals and integrity, bro. I'm not trying to virtual signal or nothing like that, but it ain't worth it. You know? Life life is life is good, bro. You don't got to do nothing compromising to have what you perceive as a better life. Because that shit it ain't always glitter. That's gold, bro. But yeah, let's get into it. My in. No, you better put that nasty ass tongue back in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Rip it out. Yes, ma'am. Well, you ain't gotta protect me from Cleetia. Come on, Cleetia. Come on. This here, let The what? It's nothing new for male comedians to wear dresses and portray women on screen for laughs. I'm trying to think. Do, do women dress up as men? To get a laugh. Has there been a movie where a woman dresses up like a man and that shit was successful? That is true. Why the fuck do men always be dressing up as women to like get a laugh out? It's kind of a weird thing. Now I think about it. You just saw Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, and Robin Williams in some of the iconic movie roles. Is this part of the recipe to up success or a cheap humiliation tactic? Comedian Cat Williams brought the debate to the forefront during a one-on-one -on -one with Sharon Sharp, Shannon Sharp. Yo, he did not just put him in a dress. He said he Sharon did. Sharp. He did. That was a crazy slip. That was a crazy slip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sharon Sharp. You could... <laughs> she had a great NFL career. <laughs> That is why. But he was really good with the heels. I mean, the cleats. I mean, the clits. <laughs> Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You're my young partner. You're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. We're going to do <sighs> That's some wild ass shit, boy. They could have did anything, dog. It could have been on some bad boys type shit. It could have been where, damn, it could have been any other thing. Why the fuck did he want Cat to, to wear a dress? Like, Cat Williams is funny, bro. Like, you could have made a Friday-like movie with Cat Williams, and that shit would have been cool. You would have been the straight man who funny, and then Cat would have just been, you know, the Chris Tucker kind of character, like the comedic relief. Y'all could have started in some different shit, like a Rush Hour type comedy or like anything, bro. Bad Boys type comedy or Friday type comedy. It could have just been a whole different, all about the Benjamins worked. It could have been something else, bro. If you was going to do the cop shit and go undercover, it could have been some other shit. That's all I'm saying. It's weird to try to get Cat Williams, who's already a funny dude. He could play a pimp. He could play all types of shit. Y'all could have went to prison together and had funny shit in prison or something. I don't know. Damn, that sounds racist or stereotypical, huh? Don't put them in prison. Well, I mean, you know, like undercover, like they playing cops. Because ain't that what Big Mama is? He undercover cop? Could have been an undercover. They could have did the 21 Jump Street shit. Oh, they look kind of old. Damn, I don't even know, bro. They could have did some shit. Some buddy cop shit. I said, How you supposed to sit on these couches though? Is that shit just for show, or am I supposed to like be in the corner like this? Like, I don't get them couches, and you can't find this fucking cognac. I tried to buy that shit, man. That shit sold out, and they don't sell that shit. Said Martin, you got my motherfucking word. My, go do what you got to do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know, we get in that office, and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too. I almost died. And I got to read this script for all these good white people. Where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? 
You already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. We can be playing a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And that's who they went and got. Twice I said it, they went and got him. Just like I'm telling you, I had the other dude's work. I had all of it. That's how I got in this position. I sure hope I have. He's drinking that cognac it. like he's sipping tea. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> cognac is the new tea of 2024. <laughs> Kevin just shook it off and said that although it never happened to him, he never messed with something that could mess up his whole brand. Uh, I definitely haven't ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have. I remember seeing that shit, bro. When he was like, uh, oh, never uh, wearing a dress, da, da da da. And then he was doing the stupid little, like, he was a princess or something on a balcony and he had a dress on. I'm like, so you trying to tell me this man at this point in his career, he looked young. He got the, the, the low Caesar cut. This is before he got the, the shit like this, where you got to use the sponge and all that shit. That Kevin Hart, the beard and everything talking about fitness and working out and all this and that he was, he had morals and integrity. All of a sudden he doing the dress and shit. So that's the only reason why I be feeling like, yo, why, why is everybody who reach a certain level start doing the dress shit? You have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. At the end of the day, you gotta know that you're a brand. Yeah. I'm a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. But get this: a few years down the line, Kevin popped up. See this shit? It's just like I'm a brand, and two years later, you do this shit. You don't even make sense. Like, you're not even two years later, nigga. Up in an SNL sketch in a dress and almost immediately his whole career skyrocketed. So, you know, some of us make. And low key, like Kevin Hart, like in the beginning of his career, dog. He used to be like a side character or like a little cameo character. He used to always be doing some fruity shit. Like, I don't know. He used to always kind of just do some like borderline sus suspect shit so it's like how the fuck you gonna say you a brand when i go back to your older movies when you was a nobody you always was doing some gay shit choices i think it's not a biggest choice um for others i'm saying um at the end of the day kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are gonna say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him <laughs> so now we have big mama's house one two and three yeah. i've never seen Medea in a pantsuit i think she wears dresses <laughs> so now i'm saying why are we picking on poor little kevin hart because it was his turn next okay. some of us are against the illuminati and we are against the illuminati at our own detriment when people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. Now, this is a hot topic. Right. I remember, like, 10, 20 years ago. Like, this was a thing that a lot of comics were talking about. Yeah. Um, when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'd be connecting them down, like, why wow, all these brothers got to wear a dress? All of us who watched the Jamie Foxx show loved the Jamie Foxx show. That is... Facts. I used to watch that when I was living in Ethiopia. Okay. <laughs> Love the Jamie Foxx show. It was the whole cast was amazing. Time to get it started. You know what to do. Mm, 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 mm. It, was re, it was on reruns. Yeah. Different than the fact that Martin and Jamie are really going to do Shanae Hawanda as a movie. Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brandon, Brandon, don't wear a dress. <laughs> You see, because once you do Sinead and Wanda as a movie, and we already have Big Mama's house, and we know Brandon T. Jackson, that nigga showed up with his dress. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was said in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was ready to be in one and two. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, just trying to make it. You just start wondering how many niggas really need to wear a dress. Why are you bashing me? And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. I'll say this, all the celebrities getting mad at Cat right now, all these guys, all the top people having something to say about him. I think it's crazy that all these people got something to say, but they kept their mouth shut when it was Harvey Weinstein, they kept their mouth shut when it was P. Diddy. Ain't it crazy? You got people actually doing physical harm, pushing themselves on people. None of these motherfuckers have nothing to say, but then when it's Cat, who has no power over them, all of a sudden now they're outspoken. That's why I wouldn't take much credence to what most of these goofballs have to say, because most of these celebrities are just for the cash. Yes. They can talk about they for the people, they for the security, they want to protect their own, blah, 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 but y'all let P. Diddy run through a bunch of your homies. That's a, and you clapped that's and you showed him love that's and you point. licked on his Instagram that's a good point. and okay all these motherfuckers do they all know that's a good point they all know so don't take none of these people seriously when they got so much to say about that I'm not saying Kat 
is Jesus. I'm not saying Cat walks on water, okay? I'm not saying Cat hasn't lied or whatever it is. Or don't have his fault on whatever. It doesn't mean that he's not saying the truth right now about a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So all these people who have so much to say, I'm like, where were y'all when all this other shit was happening? It's crazy how quiet y'all were because you were protecting your career. But all of a sudden now, you might have the integrity to come out and speak about things when it's Cat don't have power over you, so you, you say shit. Listen, a person's character is tested when they have something to lose. And y'all notice, when they got something to lose, when it came to P. Diddy, all these rappers who are all about the street life and all this other shit, they keep their fucking mouth shut. Mm -hmm. But now that it's Cat, they want to say something. Listen. And why is it so important? And they tell you shit like, but it's funny, is it? They come in. And it is crazy. Hey, listen, editor, put in the pictures. It is insane. How many guys during that era put on a dress? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a conspiracy brain person. I don't even think it's a conspiracy like that. People might, that's not. I just think Hollywood's lazy. The same way they won't put. I was just going to say Flip Wilson, dog. I remember my pops like watching Flip Wilson and he had some character on there where he dressed up like a woman. They just showed it right before this. Like, what the fuck? I don't even think it's a conspiracy like that. People might, that's not. I just think Hollywood's this dude, man, Flip Wilson, does old school shit. He used to be acting like a woman and shit. I'm like, I never understood the dressing up like a woman shit. I don't, I don't understand it, bro. To get like jokes off, like I don't know. It's like a form of like, <laughs> I ain't gonna say blackface, but like. I guess it's like when dudes be acting gay and they straight dudes. I don't know. It's it's something to that effect. It's like a dude acting gay is funny to people. I guess a guy acting feminine is funny to people. I don't know. I never really cared for it, but it's weird. It's lazy. The same way they won't put out some fucking... Stop putting out nerd superhero movies because they make money. They just put niggas in dresses because they thought that's how guys, black guys were always going to be successful. They always typecast the black people and minorities in general. Asians were always rele relegated to this. Latinos were gang members and gang bangers pretty much every time. And then black people were often put in dresses and it changed over time. But I just think that was the mindset back then. And I'm... This is not weird. I'm not against cross-dressing. I actually think, like, especially in the world of theater and stuff like that, it has its place, okay? But when it's compelled so you can fit some kind of stereotype, when it's like a type... That's what I'm trying to say. It's like, if you're a heterosexual person and you're acting like you're not, that's the part where it's like, unless you're doing a role, like on some, I guess on some Brokeback Mountain type shit, you know, like, pause if I need to or whatever. But it's like they're playing a role of a person that's homosexual. But it's like when you just doing it to try to like get a laugh at a straight man doing that or look at how good he's acting like a girl or he's acting like a homosexual man. I don't think that's funny. I don't know. That shit just don't really hit like why can't he just be funny, bro? Like tell funny ass jokes or something or do slapstick or something. I don't know. Some other shit like John Witherspoon was just funny. He was pops like. Bang, 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 bang. He never acted effeminate just to be funny or some shit. He always acted like a man, but he was just funny. An old man that was funny as hell. I casting thing. I have, I'm against all type casting, okay? I'm against all type casting. And also, I also come from a culture where men wear what people call dresses, okay? We have these long robes. You would qualify as a dress if a woman wore it. Men wear it, but that's different. It's cultural. It's not compelled. It is something that we all do, and they're not made to be worn as if it was a traditional woman's dress. Okay? Hold up. I should have it in here somewhere. Okay? Yeah, yeah. that's just this. Okay? Well, I mean, I don't know how you call it in Ethiopia. All right, just so you can see, it goes all the way down. Incredibly comfortable. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Wearing one of these is, is my favorite thing, especially when it's hot. You don't wear no underwear. You need to feel the wind on your bowels. Shit feels amazing. Pause. But... I do it out of my own wants, okay? I would feel incredibly uncomfortable if they, you know, pulled up one of them fucking Forever 21 skirts or whatever these women be wearing, okay? And said, yo, you need that for... There's not a chance in hell I would ever do that. <laughs> wow, it's weird seeing Jamie Foxx in a dress. No, it was, it, was, it, was, it was back then in living color. Yeah. It was... I, I remember that clearly. Yeah, I'll say this. I know exactly how this dress thing happens, okay? This is what happens. You're with your agent. You're in a meeting. And then some producer comes out of nowhere. It's like, listen, guys, I have an idea. Okay, stay with me. What if we put you in a dress with lots of makeup on, it's looking very feminine with your broad shoulders, and make you do a dance? <laughs> that happens. And then you're like, nah, like, come on, I think it'd be really good. It's gonna be a hit. You didn't see when Martin did it? And they'll start selling you on this shit. 
and then and then the meeting will end and you have some res reservations you know you have some issues then your agent starts nudging you because they want to make their commission like oh, come on this is your big break don't you want to make it in hollywood huh don't you want to make it on the big screen there's other movies lined up do you know who that guy is and who he's connected to if you reject him you're going to cost the studio so much money and you're going to pass on this chance and someone else is going to take your that's shot. whenever you have a sleazy fucking agent uh, most agents are sleazy. I, my my agent is my homie my, my manager is my best friend and shit like that it's a weird thing that i didn't want to be part of happen because you have to understand one thing is that we do this youtube thing and it's one thing but you have to understand that i have a whole ass career here where we at right now okay so i got movie gigs and stuff i got tv gigs and i got commercial gigs and stuff like that and shady shit has happened in the past and stuff that i don't want to be part of has happened proposition or not and the minute i say no it's a no I've never been put in a position, but I know exactly what you're talking about because I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it from other people. I'm like, ugh, that could, ugh, no. Yeah. Being pushed on, uh, being, what you're talking about is very real. I'm very, very grateful and very lucky to have the people that I have around me. But what you're saying is exactly how it works. Yeah. And the studios and the people are gonna talk to you like that. And sometimes if they know your agent is gonna back you up all the time, like my agent and my manager back me up, they're gonna not wanna speak to your agent they're gonna want to speak to you directly. Mm. They're gonna bypass your agent, right? And to. sorry about that. <laughs> no pun intended. Go by the back door. Yeah. That's what they're gonna try to do. And that's that's a hundred percent true. So the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail, so he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress. Isn't that literally what I described? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, these producers are the corniest motherfuckers you've ever seen. I don't even know how they have jobs, bro. Talentless hacks. And they come at you like it's a good idea. And you as a talent are sitting there like, nigga, are you hot? Yo, what the f did you smoke? That's what you're thinking. You're not gonna say because you don't want to lose a job. But in your head, are you hot? Well, you find a professional way to say, mm, no. But in your head, you're like, I, I can't believe this is real. Many of you already know her. She's a 68-year-old pistol-packing grandma who is quickly becoming box office gold. You know her from last year's smash hit, Diary of a Bad Black Woman. But he is a drag queen. Dave Chappelle was decapitated in front of us. And until we deal with that, until we deal with um, <laughs> the fact that a devout Muslim who doesn't eat bacon was accused of being a crackhead. And, huh? Until we, until we <laughs> establish the fact that they said that he went to Africa to smoke cocaine. Huh? When we know they don't have running water and food over there. When they don't have... Uh, let's, let's move on. Depends where you go, but okay. When they don't have paved roads over there. You say, okay, that's not true either. They have paved roads. Some places, some places they don't. Yo, cat, yo, yo, listen. What you doing right now? Hey. Yo, me and my fellow Africans are being hey. It's true some places. Chill out, bro. You lying. He, does, he doesn't, he he doesn't, no he doesn't water. walk on water. He doesn't walk on water. Guys in South Africa, they have running water in a lot of places, okay? I'm sure, this guy's not well, staying in the fucking South slums. Africa mean you go, you go to Nigeria, Senegal, you go to a yeah. bunch of places. It depends where you go, but I get what you're trying yeah. to say. Yeah. Why would you escape? You're going to escape to Africa to do cocaine and crack. Yeah, this is ridiculous. They don't got the good stuff over there. All the good stuff is here. You talking about somebody who has a wife and children, five children, and lives on the farms. That's that is true. The way that they treated Dave Chappelle. A lot yeah. I don't remember yeah. when he said he yeah. didn't want to do the deal with Comedy Central with $50 million. They said he lost his mind because he refused the money because he didn't want to do a role that made him uncomfortable. And they shamed this man like crazy. I'm not going to keep playing the video. Um, but I just want to talk about I don't about even know if it was just it made him uncomfortable. I felt like it was more of the creative control of it all. They had more control. They had the control of his name, even being Chappelle Show. He couldn't even use his own likeness, his own name, none of his shit. So to be honest, it's like, bro, you took everything from me and you want me to come back. Now I can't even do my own material or have creative director control over my skits or any of that shit. I got to do what y'all telling me to do. You, ba I'm a puppet. Nah, fuck y'all. Like, I'm a creative person. I could come up with my own shit and I know it's funny. I've made this shit successful. Now y'all want to take over my shit and my name? Fuck y'all, I'm going to leave. I want peace in my life. He chose peace. He chose his family. I respect that man wholeheartedly. I wish he would stop fucking smoking cigarettes all the time. Even when I went to his show, that boy went through like, I don't know how many cigarettes, bro. I can't tell you how many people I see with cancer and all types of shit, but whatever.
this topic just a bit and this was hollywood at the time hollywood came out with a meta and once the meta was established they just try to put every black person into it right yes, 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 so yes, like yes. once the duo of black and white guy happened then they had the asian and the black guy yeah. the really funny guy and the really serious guy that's and they the always same, wanted yeah, to repeat it yeah, that's just... and once the black man in their dress took off they're like yo how more right and then a lot of people took it like this super emasculated not realizing they just saw it as a money trend now some people want to believe it's more nefarious or whatever it is i just think it's mad corny and tacky and all the black people who jumped on it just so they could have a chance super corny too there's a lot of things. What's the corniest job you've been offered? Oh, it's when I was a dancer. Dancing in bars is the worst shit ever. Uh-huh. Why? That's, that dancing fucking leopard prints. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what it was for me. Yeah, like I'm saying, the Hollywood thing, I always found that it was really very weird. The 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 Hollywood, eh, I don't know. There's something I find very often weird about that, the way that you want to portray it, especially in, in big medias and to a lot of people and stuff like that, to all the people out there. I don't mind if it's like in a... It's weird. I don't mind if it's in the theater setting or whatever. Maybe because this, it's, the distribution is less. It doesn't care. It, it, it's, the distribution is less. And it looks very less insidious. It's in the, in the Hollywood sphere. It's really weird. It's more the way Hollywood is made. It's more than just haha. It's funny. There's a message. There's often a message or like a where do you want to try to go with with this? Like I look at things like for example every people that have. Every people that have been winning, every black people that have been winning Oscars and stuff like that, it's always been in a role where we talk about pain. It's always it's, it's always when we see black pain that you win an Oscar and stuff like that. So it's like, mm, I don't want to go and engage into that. It's been, it's been a discussion that's been going on for years. The Hollywood thing, putting me in a dress, I wouldn't do that. And I think it's weird. And I understand why people kind of frown about it and kind of are, 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 are weirded out about it. There's something about, and it came, it came from... The way black people feel about that oftentimes comes from slavery. slavery. Gonna yeah, I'm going to say that. I'm talking about people here. They're like, the, all the Americans talking. You know what I kind of think on that? And I might be wrong. I'm human, bro. I, I could be wrong. I think what happens is you do have some black stories that the people successful the whole time, they're going through this, going through that. But it's not common. I think that's the issue. It's like a lot of black people you talk to can name how they struggled or how people around them struggled or how their parents had to struggle. It's the black lifestyle is normally, unless you like Will Smith kids or like kids of like families that everybody's in the medical field and you became a medical person or this and that. Like you could tell those stories, I guess. But how interesting they gonna be, who knows? But the story of a dude that's like trying to make it and his friends are dying and he joined the military or he tried to rap to get out of it or he tried to change his life. He had a kid early, he had to deal with trying to get jobs and he had to finally get a break. Those are more like the common man stories. And then when you go back in the day to slavery, it's like that shit hurt because that's history. That's like, it makes you think of like, damn, man, this is what my ancestors had to go through, like bullshit like this for me to be able to sit down and enjoy movies and to be a part of a, a culture where like I can be in a room with white people and Spanish people and Asian people because they went through this and that. So it kind of tugs on your heartstrings, like the struggle of where people are and then they triumphant and becoming better. It only works with pain. It only works with like, unless you're just going to show a person that's going through the rigmaroles of the, but that's like not really our story more, more than likely. Like, who is our Bill Gates? Who is our Colonel Sanders? Who is our fucking, um, what's the dude that did Facebook? Um, who is our Steve Jobs? Who is our what's the Facebook dude, man? Um, yeah, like when they did social network, like who is our version of that? You know, where a dude is just going to college and just trying to figure it out. Who is our Elon Musk? Just invest in shit like that'd be interesting. Like find a black person that's polarizing like that and then go go over their life and see what kind of barriers they had to break without it being so like oh his whole family died and this and that and that. like we got to find some black stories that are like more inspirational than than sad i don't know about that there's a lot of baggage that comes from that where they were trying to do buck breaking which is what they they, they, they call it back then emasculating a man that was like just 
standing against authority and stuff like that, they would break them. And that's it's kind of a way of breaking them. People make that 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 link with Hollywood, sure. with the people that are in power and the people that are trying to make it and trying to they, they try to make that link. So for because of those reasons, yeah, I kind of I, I have to see. I, I am biased about that, sure. and I feel uneasy about that because of those reasons. And I think if you ask most of them, be it Jamie Foxx or Mark Morris, and you really sat down with them and they were giving you a hard heart, I think they regret doing those roles too. Wesley Snipes, Wesley Snipes did it too. He was. Uh, Right? No, no, I don't want to know. Yes, you. Yes, I, I don't want to. Yes, know. you. Do. I don't want to. And know. you need to because I need to stop. Mark Zuckerberg. That's what I was trying to say. We got to find the Mark Zuckerbergs, man. Him and don't Pat ruin my childhood. Him and Patrick Swayze was in a whole ass movie in a dress. It was uh Tu Wong Fu. What was it? You what was that making movie? the community look bad. You need to stop. What is up with black people getting on these platforms and feel the need to air out our dirty laundry, bro? All this to say. Those are my thoughts. Wesley. <sighs> if you go put on a dress as a dude, Patrick. just make sure there's a good reason, okay? Don't do it for some change. Swayze. Or some strange. Anything else? All right, what's up for today? Two Wong Fu uh, tanks uh, for uh, everything. Uh, uh, two Wong Fu. Uh, 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 editor, uh, uh, put two Wong Fu there. Look at, look at Wesley, bro. That's tough, man. But, um, yeah, this has been my reaction to this. Hope y'all like, share, subscribe. Y'all, this is Evan Preach, Cat Williams, Dave Chappelle. I'm a little tired, but let's keep it rocking. Let's keep it going. Peace.